So I've just completed my pedal board project for now at least, and I thought it'd be really good to take a second and show it off a little bit on YouTube so you can see what you've been hearing this whole time on my channel. And because today I just finally put the last couple of zip ties and patch cables in there, it is finally ready for prime time again. I just completed a show choir season, and after that ended, I took almost everything off the board, put it all back on in a new spot so I can fit more stuff on there. And this, I think, is going to be the pedal board for a while because I've used up all the space on the board and all of the 9 volt outs from my power supply. So this is going to be it for a bit. I'm just going to take you through the whole thing super casually, starting with the VP Junior Tuner here, which is, I think, probably the coolest pedal on the board, despite the fact that you will never hear it because that's just not what it does. It is kind of the beating heart of the pedal board here. It is the organization. It is the volume control. It's the tuner. So what I love so much about this pedal, first off, it's a volume pedal, tu volume pedal tuner. So it's serving double duty. Normally when you have a tuner pedal, it's just kind of sitting there when you're not using it, which is wasting space. And then also volume pedals are super huge. As you can see, I've got two expression pedals here and they take up half the board by themselves. So having a combination volume and tuner pedal is super useful. So that space is being used most efficiently. And also all of my other pedals are running in the loop of this volume pedal. So it controls everything, but also that means that my output from my guitar is plugged straight into the input of the tuner pedal and my output to the amp is plugged straight into the tuner pedal output. Everything else is through the loop, which means it's super easy to set up for a show. I just plug in both pedals right there and I'm good to go. So the first thing out after the tuner pedal is the wah pedal. Which is, you know, absolutely essential. Okay, maybe it's not absolutely essential, but it's essential for me. I've been using it a lot less over the years, but it's kind of like salt or a good spice that you just, you can't put on everything, but just a little bit goes a long way. And I probably use it about on average once per show for one song, but it, there's just no replacing it. This is a, a, a Crybaby Classic. I think probably got it 10 years ago, maybe, but it's it's just a wah. And I love how simple it is, but it's also, we just went from the strongest pedal on the board to the weakest link pedal on the board. The shape is super inconvenient. The slope sides are terrible. There's no LED to show if it's on or not. So the form factor is awful, but the sound is amazing and it's never leaving the board unless I find a better, a better wah pedal. Uh, I've used, briefly used, a Morley Optical Wah, and I'm tempted, but I don't have space on the board. They're huge, and I do kind of like the cock wah thing, which you can't do. You can't just, like, set it. You can't do that with an optical wah, obviously, because there's no button. But on the other hand, pressing the button down does kind of take a lot of force. So of all the pedals on the board... This is probably the weakest link and might get replaced eventually, but for now it's doing the job just fine. Now out of the wah pedal, I've got Tube Screamer, which I'm using as a, mostly as a boost-ish, so it's definitely not clean. I have the drive rolled all the way down, but you can hear it like, compared to the clean signal. There's quite a bit of gain there, um, just signal gain, not talking like high gain distortion, but it gets louder. And I really like the way the Tube Screamer kind of colors the EQ a little bit. It adds a bit of a mid thing that's really nice, uh, especially with a guitar like this that is very clean normally. There's not a lot... <laughs> not a lot of character to it but like in a good way i say this guitar kind of rings like a bell 
and I can mold it to whatever sound I need. This is a good example of that. So I'll use that a lot for kind of that edge of breakup, kind of trying to simulate a small low headroom amp when normally what I use is a high headroom. No normally I'm using a Crush Super, Orange Super Crush. Right now I'm plugged into the Boss Katana because that's my recording rig. But for this, it just adds that little bit, little bit of hair. Now if I want a lot of bit of hair, we go to the DS1, which is kind of my rock distortion sound. But it's also not like super overbearing. So I, I use this on its own quite a lot for pop stuff. Like when I'm going through and playing anything where I don't want that saturation, but I just want the sound and the texture of a distortion, but without all of that extra noise and that kind of three-dimensional feeling. This is one-dimensional in a really good way. And if I want it to be more two-dimensional, throw the tube scammer. Yeah, something like that. And those two pedals combined give me a pretty good range of possible sounds. I love combining them. I love using the Tube Screamer. Its secondary job on this board is to boost into the other pedals and get, you know, bigger, beefier sound. And I just really like that. So yeah, the, the Boss DS1 is the newest pedal on the board, but it's quickly becoming a favorite. I'm still figuring out exactly what settings I like to use on it, but I'm keeping the tone and distortion about in the middle, and the level obviously is going to be all the way up. Because I don't want my signal to get quieter, I want it to get louder. Now, if that's not enough, and occasionally this is not enough, I'll go to the second pedal that I ever bought, which is the Metal Muff. I have it set up like this because, you know, sideways is the only way it would fit, but also I never use the boost. That boost sounds terrible. The only time I would ever really use it would be if I was playing bass and I needed to do like a Cliff Burton Metallica bass solo thing. That's the only time I've really used it. But for everything else, if I just want a metal tone with one button, It just, it does that. It, it does one thing, but it does it really well. Sometimes I'll occasionally combine the Tube Screamer with it, but lately I've started to think it's been a bit too mushy, so I've been cranking the distortion on this metal muff a little bit and just using it by itself, and it does that sound. It does one thing and does it well, and that's all I can ever ask. So next up is the MXR Phase 90. <laughs> And this one's another one of those, it does one thing, but does it really well, and that's all I could want out of it. So that's basically the pedal board. Um, sometimes I'll combine some other pedals. Like I think the metal muff and the wah sound really particularly good together. <laughs> Haven't really enjoyed the DS1 with the wah as much. I'll, I guess I'll demonstrate that. I 
don't know. That sound doesn't really do it for me, but the metal muff, it does it. Um, not sure what else to really say about it. This is a setup I've been using for a couple days now. Probably going to continue to find some sounds and explore things because I don't think I have completely figured this pedal board out. But it's really exciting. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit more of the creative side of what I'm doing here. And yeah, have a good day.